Alrighty then, we've gotten, let's see here, we've created our frequency and our relative frequency tables. We had everything calculated with Excel formulas, great. We learned about cell referencing and we learned a couple basic formulas about division and summing and we learned about that dollar sign thing, which is pretty cool, honestly, in the long run. I know it doesn't seem cool, but you know, that's, I guess I'm a nerd. That's the kind of thing I find cool. Now, if you wanted to, if you want to make these all centered, like you don't like the words are on the left side and the numbers are on the right side, you could highlight your little table and you can go right here to the alignment section and click center and it'll center it all. Personally, I actually like it separated because I like knowing that Excel thinks um, these are numbers and these are words, but you're more than welcome to center it all. Heck, you could color it all if you really felt like it. You know, you could sit there and give every cell like, Ooh, this was orange, so I'll color it orange. This was purple. I wouldn't recommend it highly because it makes it hard to read, but you know, that's up to you. All right, now we go back here. We've finished all this out. We've saved it, always wise. Now we're gonna start creating the graphs. So in Excel, we're gonna make a pie chart for one of the packages of candy. We're gonna create a bar chart, a frequency bar chart for one of the packages of candy. Then a Pareto chart and a side-by-side -side relative frequency bar graph. All right, so let's start with the pie chart. There we go. And I can do it for either one. It honestly doesn't make any difference. So I'll do it for the one on the left. Why not? So I'm going to highlight my colors and my numbers. All right. I'm going to go to insert pie chart. Now there is only one pie chart in here that is any good. And as students of statistics, you should know that it's this guy right here in the top left corner. The rest is all not good. We never like three-dimensional graphs. And this thing in here, who the heck knows what those are doing? We don't want that. We want this one right here. So you click on that, and there they are. And you think, oh, you're done. Oh, no, you're not. I mean, for starters, this is not the way we like these graphs labeled. And we need a title on top of it all. So I'm going to click on, oh, let me just show you something here. So if I click off of the graph, all those wonderful things that were like format and layout, they disappear. If you click back on the graph, there they are, the chart tools, they come back, right? Now, if you're in old Excel, you're kind of stuck by right clicking a lot. You'll want to right click on the, um, on the graph. And then a lot of these options will show up to you in different ways, design, layout, that kind of thing. You have to roam around. So I'm going to do a pie chart. I'm going to put it above my chart and I say pie chart of candy color. Notice I'm not telling you what my candies were. <laughs> you get to wonder. All right, next, um, I don't really want a legend, but I definitely want data labels. So I'm gonna click on data labels. And I actually want some more options. So I'm gonna go right here. I want the percentage to show, not the value. I want to show leader lines, That that means that like orange will have a little line that connects it to the piece of pie in case it's outside. I want the category name to show. Now, if you're wondering what this looks like, you can kind of move it off, move this little dialog box off and you can see what it's looking like behind you. And that's good, right? So orange has got the 19%, purple's got the 21% and that's appropriate. Look over here. Orange was about 19%, purple was about 21% and so on. All right, so that's great. None of them actually ended up being outside, so the leader line thing was unimportant, but I'll just show you what it would look like if I clicked on this purple here and dragged him outside. See how it makes that line? That's all that means. All right, I do not want a legend on this thing, so I'm going to click on the legend, and I could click delete, or I could just go to legend and click none. Either way, it makes it disappear. Now, the only other issue is that these colors are not really what I want. If I click on the pie piece one time, it highlights the whole thing. See how there's little dots all around it? I click again, and I'm selecting that one wedge. Right click, and I can go to the color right here. And I can choose what color I want. I want it to be orange because it's orange. Now I click, click, click twice to click into one little piece of wedge. And I'm going to go here to the little bucket. I'm going to pick a purple that I like. How about that purple? Green looks good. White, yuck. So I'll click, click, and find a color in the paint bucket that I'm happy with. Probably like a cream. There we go. I've made all the colors good.